Hey everybody, Jazzy here. I have been having a blast with the new Midsummer Carnival event, the third seasonal event to be added to Don't Starve Together. It's only here for a limited time, but you can always re-enable it on your world at any time by changing the world settings. This event doesn't add a whole lot of survival content, especially compared to Winter's Feast or Year of the Beefalo, but it is going to be really important for builders as it adds tons of new structures and unlocks an incredible amount of building potential. The best part is that all of it is instantly accessible on day one, and most of the stuff added is cheap and easy to manipulate. So today I want to give you a few tricks and tips I've discovered with the new content, and hopefully give you some ideas for how you can easily incorporate it into your world. Let's begin with the Carnival Tree Sapling, which can be purchased from Corvus for a measly one gold and three seeds. We don't currently get a lot of tree variety in the game, and the addition of a brand new tree is going to make an immediate impact on the appearance of your base. This tree is absolutely beautiful and gives you an enormous surrounding area in which to add more structures. You can chop it at any time to get the sapling back and it doesn't require a ton of space to replant. For the building area, I like to give the tree a 4x4 square of tiles. This gives you a bit of surrounding turf on which you can decorate and build, but you can always make it larger if you want. Your camera orientation will also affect the layout, as the entire area is a bit longer horizontally than it is vertically. For builds like pens and tree zones, it makes for a beautiful centerpiece. Imagine a gecko pen with the wall surrounding the tree, with grass planted on the surrounding turf for harvesting without the fear of spawning new geckos. That bunny man set piece you find in the caves contains a center area with grass and carrots. Once you remove those, you can easily replace that area with a conival tree, and then add some berry bushes, grass tufts, or other conival decorations to make your bunnies happy and hopefully less homicidal towards omnivores. Practically any farm you build can benefit from a conival tree. Grass and twigs can be planted close to it, and birch nut trees will also complement the color scheme, especially in autumn and spring. I converted a bunny man set piece into a farming area with farm plots and berry bushes surrounding the tree. It sits in a shaft of light in the caves, so you can still appreciate the build during the day. Just know that you won't get any Corvus in the cave, so any carnival decorations you will need to bring with you from the overworld. The shrub item on its own is also a lovely decorative item and you can buy a bunch of these to add immediately to your builds. In Hamlet, you can build hedges with the city planning tab, and now we have our very own mini potted shrubs in DST. Smash a couple of wood walls down and drop the shrub right on top to give it a more cultivated look. I like to use broken wood walls as trim for my builds, and lately I've been finding ways to incorporate the shrubs into this trim just to break up the long lines of brown. But it's honestly hard to make one of these not look good. They don't have a hitbox, so you can quick drop them literally anywhere your character can stand. Here's an example of a set piece I've made on Thrill of the Grill. Starting with the tree on a 4x4 plot with surrounding decorations. I added walls to the back and sides to make it feel more of a hideaway for the Crow Kids. Almost like stepping into a gazebo with cultivated forest decor. There is so much potential with these trees, and I'm currently throwing all of my seeds at Corvus while the event is live so that I can continue to build with the trees when the event ends. Remember, you can summon Corvus to any tree by ringing the bell, so it's easy to buy these items from anywhere in the world. The prize booth is another great item to invest in. You can buy one from Corvus for the same price as the tree. When placed, it unlocks all of the prizes that you can redeem with tickets you win from the carnival games. But the hack is that it also functions as an infinite light source turning on when you step up to it. And it's not hard to incorporate these into early builds. For example, you can access a small area of chests at night without the need for a light. If you like to do your cooking at night, then it's not hard to build a booth close to your crockpots. You could even plant a few grass or twigs nearby for nighttime harvesting. It's a bit on the bulky side, and admittedly not the most fitting look for most of these functions. A road lined with prize booths is not going to be the prettiest, even if it does light your way. The benefit is that it is very cheap and easy to relocate, so once you get access to other lighting options, you can just hammer them and save for other builds. Now once you get a prize booth, you can play some of the games and start to earn tickets. If you are playing near a decorated 
tree, then the crow kids will watch you play and throw you extra tickets afterwards. So if you're grinding the games, then it will benefit you to have a couple trees nearby for those extra tickets. All of the games will benefit from speed boost. So if you have a cane, or if you can afford to place some cobble under the playing area, then you'll be able to score higher in these games and earn a few extra tickets. My personal favorite is the egg scramble, where you're trying to herd the eggs into that center area. If you place a ring of walls around the outside of the circle, then the eggs won't be able to get as far away and you'll have an easier time getting them back to the middle. Just don't place the walls too closely or else the eggs might get tossed out of the arena. As long as they're outside of that circle, then you should be fine. The tickets can be exchanged for a bunch of stuff at the prize booth. The food items I don't use that much, although I suppose in a pinch you could keep some spare tickets near a booth and grab some popcorn if you're starving. I also don't use body slot clothing all that often, but the cloak and capulets are pretty decent summer clothing. They're kind of like cheap floral shirts that only last for five days, so if you'd rather hang around the carnival all summer, then three of these will see you through the season. Good luck with the wildfires. But the real prizes from the booth are the decorations, which are primarily used to decorate the area around a conival tree make the tree more festive, and attract crow kids. But you can place these decorations anywhere you want. And this is where the building possibilities really start to take off. We get nine brand new decoration kits, and many of the kits come with a lot of variety. For example, the mystery box can give 12 different possible statuettes, eight common, three uncommon, and one rare. If you haven't gathered for my curio cabinet, I'm a complete sucker for collectibles. And while I'm blowing all of my tickets on mystery boxes, I will get plenty of common statuettes that I can use all over my base as cheap statues that won't break my back to move around. The mini game decorations are adorable. I'm gonna stick some of the mini pendulums around my birdcage and, you know, pretend that it's egg storage. The night lights are cool, but kind of on the expensive side with a small light radius. I suppose if you need a night light for no more than a minute, then it's convenient enough unintrusive, and available much earlier than glow caps. Now, regarding the miniature trees, I'm obsessed. They're like tiny potted carnival trees, except they come with this beautiful stand and two varieties. I'm about to get my feng shui in every corner of my world with these. They are easy to retrofit onto a build and are almost guaranteed to make it look better. This update was kind of a tree rework when you think about it. Brand new, fully sized, decoratable trees, plus shrubs, and now potted bonsais. But to be honest, all the decorations are beautiful. I know that a lot of this excitement is not coming from a survival mindset, although there are definitely ways to utilize some of this content in the early game. But I'm a builder, frankly, and this is why I love the game. So having new stuff to build with is what keeps me interested in playing and streaming for hours every week. So I'm very thankful for this update, and I cannot imagine a future Megabase world where I would not enable this event for a period, just to swoop up a handful of trees and decorations. Let me know in the comments what you've enjoyed in this update, and if you've discovered any tricks with the new content. And I hope that this inspires you to incorporate some of the event into your world. If so, then you should join our Discord and post your base picks immediately. Consider this an invitation. Link in the description. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.